Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, coming to you live from the Midwest? I don't know. Anyway, guys, uh, we're returning to Suzerain. Uh, we are playing this game because the DLC came out on Monday for this, the first DLC called Rizia, which puts you in a monarchy. Uh, so it's a completely new storyline with a completely new country, the Kingdom of Rizia, where you are the monarch of this kingdom. It's in the same universe as Suzerain, so you're still looking at, uh, you know, the same sort of shared universe, but just sort of a different point of view at a slightly different timeline. So let's go ahead and continue where we left off last time, and I believe we were entering into Chapter 2 of the game, or the second turn of the game, um, and we've recently taken control of the monarchy. We have allowed our daughter to be sort of our um, understudy, because she is the... Uh, heir apparent to the throne. We're about 45, she's 18. So hopefully a long ways away. Uh, we have invested in a couple of items. So I'm trying to see here. We are building a hospital in our capital city, which will help with our military personnel. We are also building or restoring an ancient city in Topaz, which is sort of an ancient city for the kingdom. And then we've got to figure out what we're going to do with the rest of our money. I did, I guess it didn't save because it's just the beginning of the second turn. Maybe, I'm not sure where the save point was. But we did decide we were going to go with the, do an oil, um, building an oil or gas, gas field off the coast. So we're going to go ahead and expand and do the expansion of offshore gas fields. So this will cost one authority here, drop us down to eight. It'll cost three budget, drop us down to two, but in three turns, we will get plus two energy construction per turn. So we'll go ahead and sign that. That will cost us some money, so you can see our budget's gonna drop. But now we've enacted several laws here. Expanding the offshore gas field, excavating the Topa's ancient resid city, which should bring tourism and hopefully some more money. Establish the Romus Taurus Hospital, we did a medium initial global energy sale to raise some extra cash. And then we also did the sovereign transition clemency with our previous one. Um, we get more military manpower, but it costs us budget and authority to lower the cons conscription age. What is re removing the provincial police? And a resolute commitment to enacting... No. Why would she be for this? I know she doesn't like the local police in one of the eastern provinces, but that would hurt the military manpower, wouldn't it? Increasing provincial levies. That feels like a waste. Provincial levies are not going to do well in combat. Expand border guards. Minus one drug trade, minus one tourism, minus one budget. This is generally popular? Okay. But the minus two tourism would probably hurt the economy. I don't know how much the drug trade would help, like getting getting that down. Subsidies for energy heating. Our religious guy would be happy. The rest of the folks are pretty lukewarm on it. Um, extensive geological survey initiative to try and find better resources. Let's do that. Let's try and find more resources to maybe give us more money. That does cause us to spend all of our money, but I can do one other thing here. We've got four gas at the moment. So let's go ahead and sell... Um, a medium second global energy sale gives me plus two budget. So it gives me back two money. And then we will wait till toward the end of the turn just to see in case anything else comes up where we might need additional cash. If nothing does come up, we may try to do some civil uh, bills to try and make our people like us a little bit more. You know, we might do well, not welfare privatization, that would raise more cash, but generally it's actually popular by everybody except our militarist. Interesting. Um, but we might do like. I don't know about tax credits for businesses apparently are popular, but it hurts your budget every turn, so... The problem isn't the economy right now for us, though. The problem is we don't have enough workers, is my understanding. Um, 
But I wanted to do... There was a welfare thing. Possibly housing for the poor, maybe? That would cost one budget and one authority. That might be popular. We could also do naturalization of foreigners. Less popular with the nationalist Hugo, our uncle, or, and our military counselor, but the other folks agree. It also increases manpower per turn, so it helps the economy in that sense, although it does reduce your authority quite a bit um, to uh, sort of legalize to, to a large extent elements of the uh, the immigration gr immigrant groups. Just trying to see, there's so many, so many options here. Enforce religious education. I'm sure my religious guy would love that. Tenant protection laws. You could also sell a batch of military equipment, which I'm sure our militarist would not be happy with, but. It does give you a chunk of cash, too. We'd have four budget to do that. So we could sell off our military assets also. Which would then give us the option to... Maybe build, like, a, a shipyard or something with that money. I need more money. And another way to do that is to build military equipment. So, like, build a military equipment factory, for example. It costs energy every turn, though. Consumer industry park. So any economic development is going to eat into our budget. I do like the naval shipyard expansion, but I need to find a way to get one more budget to do that. Because then you can sell military ships. Navies seem important for us. If, you, if we zoom out here and we take a look at the actual, our country. Rizia has a gulf on the west coast. The Suda Sea on the northern coast. And then the Anti... Antakia Sea on the eastern and southern coast. So we are primarily, we're basically on a peninsula with a couple of land borders. So naval assets do seem important. But before we do that, I guess let's just start the, let's start this turn for better or worse. Um, and then we'll, we'll wait and see because who knows what might come up budget wise. Meanwhile, you can see some newspapers came out. The kingdom surveys its lands. His Majesty's office has announced that an, expen an expansive and detailed mineralogical survey of all of Rizia will be carried out in the coming months in order to chart which precious resources remain hidden under the kingdom's crust. Teams of geologists will be formed in a close cooperation with universities and mining companies carrying out the survey. The latest technological techniques will be technological techniques will be used in this process, all funded by the treasury. King envisions greater gas exports. That could be actually a little bit... We could be vulnerable if the gas prices drop. That could be a problem. But either way. Let's go ahead and uh, do our next thing. I don't think we have anything else to do at the moment. I don't know if there's any decrees I didn't look at. I can't do a small sale right now. We're just selling off the oil reserves. Didn't we already do this one? Oh, those are purchases. Why would we buy this? So the fact that you can buy global energy makes me worried that there's going to be like an energy crisis or something. Although maybe that's just because if you expand your economy, eventually you need more oil. So going the resource route might not be smart. But anyway, let's go ahead and see what our next meeting is all about. Council meeting on foreign relations. The council chambers in the Palace Resna. The day of my foreign policy council meeting had arrived. It was a hot one. The fans in Palace Resna provided little relief. I decided to take in some fresh air in the palace gardens. Pavel had hired a new groundskeeper who faithfully maintained his father's arrangements. Before he was my butcher, my friend had explained to me that the plants and flowers here were laid out geographically. Ricken ferns in the east, zinnian lilies to the south, a Rumberg-style rose garden in the north. To the west was a labyrinth hedge maze made of laurels donated from the kingdom of Naburk. I spent a while wandering around, then returned to the middle of the garden where a series of stone sculptures were surrounded by Rizian palms and succulents. To my left I saw Avina reading a book on a bench beneath a decorative stone arch in the 
palm grove to my right. I caught a glimpse of my mother. Uh, let's go talk to Vina, I guess. I made my way to the stone arch and sat down next to my daughter. Hello, father. Okay. Good to see you outside of the council chambers. Do you have any questions about the past few meetings? I have plenty, but I'll figure them out in my own time. This must be overwhelming you as, as well. So many decisions to make. I am the king! <laughs> okay. Uh, it would be easier if I knew whom I could trust. You can always trust me, father. What do you think of the House of Delegates? Will you go talk to them? Um, the only way I would do that is out of weakness. Your friend, Mr. Saison? We only saw him once. I'll take their opinions into consideration, but I'm the one with the final say. Any good monarch listens to the will of the public. Queen Liza always said that. And if the will of the public is for there to be mo no monarch, what then? If you rule as well as she did, that won't ever become a problem. <laughs> sure, Vina, sure. Uh, a clock chimed in the distance. It was time for the meeting. Mm, so, I wonder what would happen if I had talked to my, m my mother, who I guess I'm now given the cold shoulder. Enough chit-chat, let's go. A superpower suddenly taking an interest in this part of the continent? What's next? All of our children will have to learn Arcasian? The decision wasn't made with any ill intent toward Rizia. There's greater global forces at work than what's happening in, the, in our corner of South Maricopa. What the superpowers decide affects us, Mr. Equibel. Their intent is of no importance. Silence! No, I'm not. Okay. Care to catch me up? Excuse us, Your Majesty. We were just discussing the recent news concerning Laspasia's membership in the ATO. Mm. We don't know anything about the situation yet. We'll have to wait and see what happens. A reasonable response, Your Majesty. Respectfully, Your Grace, there's nothing reasonable about allowing Arcasia and its puppets to spread instability across the globe. If you're unfamiliar, Arcasia is basically this version, this world's version of the United States. Dwight Walker is very clearly inspired by Dwight D. Eisenhower. With the exception of, I don't think he was military related. Or maybe he did. Enlisting the Arcasian naval forces to defend the democracies of East Maricopa during the tumultuous century of revolutions. What would you have us do, Duchess Azaro? We're on shaky enough ground with Lespasia as it is. Of course, we should act sensibly, but we need to show the Republic and its new friends that Rizia can hold its own. Um... Hmm. What are the security implications of this new alliance, Duchess Azaro? We can definitely expect the Arcasian military to increase their presence in Laspasia. Laspasia already houses Arcasian military personnel. Air and naval bases cannot be far behind. I cannot say for certain that all that firepower will be directed against us in case of a conflict, but it does enhance the threat that Laspasia, and yes, potentially pales, poses to our kingdom. Will the new alliance have economic consequences? It's early to say, Your Majesty. Our most significant economic relationship with Laspasia is our partnership in the Miftian International Trade Zone. Having Arcasia behind them might well embolden Laspasia to push for a larger share in the ITZ, but they'd also have Vagslin and Morelia to contend with. Laspasia using Arcasia's backing to strengthen its economic ties with Pales 
could also have negative ramifications, especially when it comes to the new gas field. What are our current relations with Laspasia? I'd categorize them as neutral but frosty, your majesty. Queen Liza's diplomacy kept us on good terms with Laspasia for a time after their transition to democracy, but things were beginning to sour even before the Pale's conflict. We still maintain embassies in each other's countries, but I haven't met with their foreign minister since before the election of their new prime minister, Alvarez. He's the drunkard from before, right? The guy who pretended to be drunk? Um... Does the development pose a threat to the monarchy? Not an immediate one, your majesty, but we must be watchful. We've seen Arcasian-backed revolutions succeed in Rika and Xena, and we do suspect the Saisons were communicating with Arcasia prior to the 1926 uprising. Quinnell's ATO membership was already cause for concern five years ago. With Laspasia and the Alliance as well as Arcasia, influences present to both our north and southern borders. There's great potential for destabilization. On the other hand, your grace, Arcasia has friendly ties with at least one monarchy. You may recall President Dwight Walker actually boasts Rumbergian heritage. Uh, okay. What do you think I should do? Every began, everyone began talking at once. Hugo motioned for silence. In my view, Rizia should bolster our alliance with our fellow monarchies like Rumberg and the rest of the guild of our royal allies for commercial exchange. Building a stronger bond with them will not only enrich us, it'll counterbalance ATO's democratic influence. This is true, but we can't rely on grace to come to our aid in a conflict. For that, we'll need to build up our military and defense capabilities. I'd say it's more crucial to form new trade relationships with our neighbors. If Laspasia becomes even more of an economic juggernaut in our region, it'll upset the balance of power. And I don't think we should ignore the opportunity to thaw our relationship with Laspia. Laspia. Why am I saying Laspasia? Uh, Lespa itself, for one, for one would rather have handle them as a friend than a foe. Um, anything to add, Grand Wiseman? Well, Your Majesty, the teachings of Saint Vuch compel us to exercise goodwill and compassion toward our neighbors. On the other hand, we must be watchful that Lespia does not use its international clout to further the spread of the Das Nurist faith. What about you, Vina? Any thoughts? Oh, um... We certainly don't want tensions to rise with Lespia. <laughs> uh, but we don't ATO influence over us wellness either. What about using cultural exchanges and other partnerships to spread Rizia's own influence beyond our borders? Um. Cultural exchanges, huh? I like that idea in theory, but it sounds expensive. I have an idea regarding this. I'll bring it up at the end of the meeting. Okay, what about the rest of our geopolitical situation? What about Valen? Relations with our one-time allies have been turbulent at best since the Civil War. The international unpopularity of the current president, Victor Smolok, has only complicated matters. All I ask is that Valen return Zill as promised. After that, I'm happy to cut ties. So Valen, remember, these are the guys who are sort of conducting a genocide. They're sort of a... I guess they're kind of a fascist state. Um, there are a lot of refugees fleeing Valen into Swordland. We don't have a land border with them, so less of, a la less of an issue with refugees. Although we do... We are leasing... I guess we do technically have a border because we are leasing the province of Zill to them. We gave them a 25-year lease when our war went poor with pals. So I don't want to say I won't abandon them because we do want the territory back. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, the thing I really care about them is that they return Zill as promised. The return is scheduled for the end of 1952. 
Valen's access to Zill's land and res resources would help bring it out of recession after the war. Smolok will have difficulty letting go of such a valuable asset. Okay. Can we count on him to honor the terms of the treaty? Smolok is not as weak as he seems. It'll take a great deal of time and effort before our firepower matches him. He may act bold. Currently, their foreign ministry is working in close cooperation with us, and President Smolok has promised to honor the treaty. In the meantime, any perceived aggression on our part may only give an excuse to break it. Can the international community be relied on to intervene if he breaks the pact? Given how many countries depend on Vezic oil, either directly or indirectly, I wouldn't be so sure about that. The funding Valen has received from United Cantana may also have Smolok believing he can act with impunity. What about the people of Zil? Surely they can't wait to return to Rizia. Half the country's native Rizian population fled during the Civil War, like the Queen Mother parents, I recall. Among those who were stubborn enough to stay, opinion is divided. We have to remember, it's been almost 25 years. I'll act diplomatically with President Smolak. We can sweeten the deal if necessary. I'll appease him until we get Zill back. That's a little, that seems weak. I don't want to just like give him whatever he wants. When's the next diplomatic visit to Valen? As a matter of fact, you're slated for a trip to Zill at the end of this year for the second to last Vezic Rizian Friendship Day. The name's gotta be some kind of joke. What's that? Friendship Day is a celebration that's been held in Zill every year since the treaty was signed. Since Smolak took over, he used the occasion to trot out all the shiny new tanks Valen's oil money and United Cantana funding bought him. Your presence will be at the very least rem remind him of the occupation's temporary nature. I'll talk to him. Maybe we can find a productive agreement. An admirable impulse, but this is unfortunately only a ceremony and not a diplomatic talk. For now, I propose we move on with our briefing. I haven't heard much about the countries of the former empire of Mordia. Do you want to discuss Morella or Derdia? Morella. You've already heard about their new left-wing ruling coalition, correct? Please enlighten me. After years of infighting, the country's left-leaning parties miraculously united in time to win this year's election. The politician who managed that feat is now Morella's new prime minister, Alma Saltana. Or as she might prefer, Comrade. Comrade. <laughs> Hugo grimaced. Lespia and Atio are enough of a threat without the malevolence knocking at our back door. Okay. Both Arcasian liberals and malevolists hate everything we stand for. I don't know that, like, do the Arcasians really hate what we stand for? Notionally, we're a democracy, even if it's not in practice. They both hate everything we stand for. Neither ideology respects the sovereignty of a monarch. I see them as two sides of one coin. In this case, it's Vagslandian socialism we ought to be worried about, not malevolism. Morella doesn't stand a chance of entering the Contanian security pact, not with its current level of poverty. But there's rumors Prime Minister Sultana has been arranging meetings with Vagslandian Chancellor Emmerich Hegel. How are our relations with Vagsland at the moment? Neutral. As you know, House Torres has a historical tie to the late Valgos Empire, but Chancellor Hegel isn't exactly brimming with nostalgia for that era. So far, our trade relationships with Morella have not been affected, nor has our partnership in the international trade zone. But Morella and Vagsland teaming up in that arena could potentially be of more concern than Lespia. Lespia. As for Morella's neighbor, Derdia, our relations with them have become strained since the country's conversion to a theocracy. However, we still maintain a number of cooperative agreements, including our acceptance of dirty and migrants as labor hands. I must say that the supreme wiseman, Yorga Asmal, did not approve of our ban on Golcondist pilgrims, 
Terizian holy sites. Okay. I harbor reservations about it myself, but I trust the Grand Wiseman's decision. Though I wonder why he's not put similar restrictions on Denertius. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Yes, they've taken to blocking Daridians at the border entirely, resulting in some rather nasty armed skirmishes. I take it the Morellians won't be thrilled if we revoke our own ban? No, they've been having a hard enough time keeping the Gokondas at bay. Say what you will about Daridians' beliefs, you can't argue with their weaponry. It's part of their warrior culture, Duchess. Their practice is centered on martial discipline and physical strength. Can they be bargained with? Everyone can be bargained with, Your Majesty. Like Victor Smolak, Mr. Asmal may be looking for a way to end his country's geopolitical isolation. What about Swordland? <laughs> What's going on over there? Now that the Colonel has decided to retire, you mean? His successor is called Evald Alfonso. From everything I've heard, he's Sol's exact opposite. That's good then, right? It depends. He's already instituted some major changes. Thinking, think sweeping privatization and tax cuts. Sol is forced out of power, more women in prominent positions, and although he's yet to pass any kind of liber liberatory reforms, our beloved Liza did. Speaking of Liza, she's the one who first opened trade negotiations with Swordland back when it was still a kingdom, but Sol's disdain for the monarchy kept us from con continuing down that path. The Alfonso administration, meanwhile, has no such qualms about royalty. In fact, his new development minister, Gus Manager, has already had personal business dealings in Rizia. Our friend Mr. Montoro of Rizian Royal Gold has been making overtures to the Swordish oligarchy. It seems birds of crank, crassly, ostentatious plum flock to get plumage flock together. What do they want from us? This hasn't been disclosed yet. The country has already abundant gas resources. They can be looking to shore up their central bank with gold in the wake of Alfonso's privatization spree. I'll contact you once Alfonso has agreed on a date for his visit. Isn't pails the topic of the day? I was just about to bring up the Grand Duchy. Your father's unfortunate passing has given us a chance for a fresh start with Duke Reinhardt. I heard he reached out to you some years ago. Perhaps that connection can be built upon. I still don't know if he can be trusted. Give him a chance. I myself advise your father to speak with the new Duke of Pales, to no avail, of course. Compared to his brother, Noljuma, Alex Reinhardt seems far more amenable to, the th to a thaw between our countries. He wasn't even born when Rizzi and Pales were fighting, and I suspect he's beginning to see the disadvantage of staying connected to Lespia. Uh, okay. Tell me about their current relationship. The Grand Duchy has been heavily dependent on the Republic of Lespa since the 1920s, Your Majesty. Our northern neighbor has taken extensive advantage of, our, of the natural gas reserves off the southern Palaisian coast. Lespia has relocated a number of its major corporations to Pales in exchange for extremely generous tax breaks. In addition, the resulting income Pales has access to Lespian technology and military equipment, which at the moment surpass our own. Pale still has a Rizian-speaking population, right? How influential are they? They're a minority, but a vocal one. They believe in the preservation of the Rizian language, but they still consider themselves Palsian at heart. Duke Njmola's proposed Rizian ban was a bridge too far for them. They seem to heavily favor his brother. Where's Vagsland in all this? Does Pales have any relationship with the Republic? Not a friendly one. Most Vaglish Palaisians were still vehemently against their ancestral homelands turned to socialism. In turn, the Republic of Vagsland has nothing to do with its former colony since the Reinhardt decision to seek protection from Lesbia. Back in the 1920s, there were a few attempts at marshalling support for Vagslandian socialist revolution in the Grand Duchy. None bore fruit. Okay. Are you leaning toward any particular diplomatic strategy regarding pals, Your Majesty? Hmm... Open closer ties with Pales before Lespia's ATO membership might make it more complicated. I bear no ill will toward them. 
The Vagslandian Socialist Revolution, you say? Is it too late to start one over there now? I don't know. We should play in the sympathies of Rizian speaking sentiment of their pop segment of their population, sway them to our side. I mean, I guess that's an option. It might lead to war. I don't really know. I know there can be a war in this game. I don't know if it's with Pales or with Valum. Over Zill or over the Grand Duchy of Pales, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know. What should we do? What do you guys think? <laughs> nice, Crimson. The question is, if we destabilize pals, what risk do we do we incur with that, right? Like, they have more advanced technology than we do because they have less BI on their side. They're gas rich, so presumably they've got a good chunk of cash. Does going to war with them risk a further expansion of the war to someone else? I'm in no rush to rush off to war, but I have sort of said that my overall goal is to retake... Rizia's, you know, lost colonies, if you will. <laughs> hmm. I don't know. Lespa might? Lespia might? Intervene on Pale's side again, possibly. I think that's where it comes down to us building a better navy, right? Like, at the end of the day, if we've got a strong enough navy, maybe we can isolate the Grand Duchy? One being kind of the middle ground? Yeah. I don't know. I wish all my other advisors would tell me what their thoughts are. There's also the matter of the gas field dear Elena mentioned during her own briefing. Explorations are still ongoing, but there's a good indication both Rizian and Pales could have a claim to the new resource. There's one more country we haven't discussed. Rumberg. Queen Beatrice. Yes, how are my in-laws? <laughs> uh... I was expected Beatrice to turn on me after Lena Le, Le, Lena died. I'm amazing. I'm amazed she stayed allied with us. Yes, for the time being, Queen, Queen Beatrice and her country are firmly allied with Rizia. Mr. Werner already mentioned the large amounts of gold we export to that country through the strategic port Grimm. We also have a deal allowing Rumberg's ships priority access to our ports in Port de Raison and Molink. We are, in essence, their gateway to the Arcasian Sea. Militarily speaking, the alliance doesn't amount to much. Rumberg will supply us with arms in case of war, but neither of our countries is officially obliged to come to the other's side. Does Rumberg want anything else from us? Maybe not from us, but the country's energy needs are insatiable. The Queen's interested in any country with oil or natural gas resources. In other words, if we do start drilling that new field off Ailes, I expect Her Excellency will soon come calling. Becoming one of Rumberg's main energy suppliers would definitely strengthen our partnership. It would. Whether it's good or bad in the eyes of the international community is another question. 
I will remind the Council of our prior conversation regarding ATO and the necessity of strengthening our bond with other monarchies, especially Rumberg. Fortunately, we have living evidence that bond right here at the table. All eyes turned to Vina. She looked up from notes she'd been taking. <laughs> yes, she is, she's half Rumbergian, right? Don't worry, Aunt Bay still dotes on me like I'm the daughter she never had. Good to see it that you remain in Her Excellency's good graces. The queen- Hey, hey, everybody! The queen likes me, too! <laughs> um... You heard him, Vina. Maybe it's time we arrange a visit with dear Aunt Bay. Anything for the kingdom. Before we conclude, there is still the matter of His Majesty's stance on the Sp Lespia's at ATO membership. Do you have any further thoughts on that? I don't know. You all have very good ideas. I'll consider a combination of the above approaches. That's a little bit. I like. I do kind of like Vina's approach of a cultural thing, but it does sound expensive. Like like we said. Um. I do want to build up our military, so. I was quite fond of the princess's suggestion that we increase Rizia's soft power outside our borders. We've also spoken of the need to stoke pro-Rizian sympathies in both Zil and Pals. I would therefore suggest funding branches of the Iranian Taurus Association in both of those regions. What does my great-grandmother have to do with anything? Your esteemed ancestor first had the idea of funding an organization devoted, devoted to promoting Rizian culture abroad. It currently is active in Rumberg and a few other Grace members. Its satellite organization organized Rizian language classes, concerts, art exhibitions, traditional festivals. I myself volunteer with the ATA as an ambassador for a time. I can vouch for its integrity. Do you think it would be help do you think it would be helpful in Zill? There are children Vina's age in Zill who have spent their whole lives believing they're Vesic. If the handover goes as planned, we will need to remind Zill citizens of their true heritage. And if not, we'll need as many Rizian sympathizers on the inside as we can get. I can see the use of such a program, but wouldn't it be costly? Expanding the ATA to both Zill and Pals would indeed eat into our budget. I like the idea. It could even give us an edge in upcoming trade deals. But if you want to be frugal, I'd choose between the two regions. No need for frugality. frugality. Let's expand it into both. Very well, Your Mal Majesty. I'll allocate the funds. Thank you for the idea, Vina. Vina. Queen Liza would be proud. Thanks for listening, everybody. I do hope I haven't been too much of a bore. So I guess I'm not going full militarist. But I am going full expansion of Rizia. We'll have to see what that... Uh, what that'll do for us. Are there more decrees that I can choose from with no budget to spend on them? Oh, whoops, there's a housing crisis? That's not good. Guess I should have invested in the housing for poor people, huh? 
ATA operations active in Zill and PALS. Mining surveys are underway. We did, we are expanding the military. Oh, we haven't started that yet. All right. Um, let's spend our resources to expand some of our units. So we'll do three new infantry divisions, one new support division, and one new armored division. That's five of eight. Probably increase the military budget next turn, but we shall see. What new decrees are there? Remove Golconda's Blasphemy Law. Everybody opposes it, pretty much. Permanent work for labor hands? Nope. Build support vehicle factory? Build a tank factory. Well, I have no money for any of those things. What do we have here? Port Drazon. Uh, oil workers commemorate closing of field. Yeah, we read about that in the last stream. Rifle production halted in Force Deltor after an accident. Machine at the Force Deltor rifle plant experienced a malfunction, stalling weapons production for the next week. The cause is being looked into, but the plant manager indicates it's due to the ongoing labor shortage. Hmm. Excavation promises touristic and cultural renaissance. Okay, so we are really going down the Rizian culture route, now that you think about it. We're doing the ancient city restoration. We're doing the Rizian sort of cultural exchanges in both Pals and Zill. We did the grand parades for the monarchy pretty much everywhere when we got our when we had our coronation, and we did the sort of historically normal pardoning of of folks when we came into power. So we have really been going all in on um, Rizian culture. I'm generally inclined, so like, I know that Lucia, Lucida won't be happy if we sell some support vehicles. We don't have enough. But, but I'm generally inclined to see if, if there's anything... I'm building a tank division and a support vehicle, so I don't know that I can sell any equipment. I guess we do have 500 military equipment here. I could sell some stuff to get more budget. I know some of my counselors won't be happy, but I could use the budget here. And then we can use that... Is there anything else we can sell? I mean, we could privatize parts of the economy, but I... I so need the dam. You really think so? Like, we'll have a bunch of money, but it'll be three turns from now. We can sell two batches of military equipment? We can always buy it back, right? I'll piss off a lot of people by selling off my stockpiles, but... I need money! I'm spending my authority to do it, though. Thank you for the, the sub growler, appreciate it. Uh, you really think we need the dam? I'm kind of inclined to go with the port. The shipyard. How much is that gonna cost? Three? The dam provides three energy per turn, but it costs four, it takes five, four turns to build. So, and we're getting two more energy per turn next turn, or two turns from now based on the oil field we're building. Although, if oil prices drop, we're screwed. So I think we're going to go with the shipyard. That'll get me, I'm surprised she's not all for it. But I'm for I'm all for the Navy. We are already started expanding the Navy to start. And then our one remaining gold will go to housing for the poor. I don't know how many turns are in the game. That's the other part. 
I, I have been told it's shorter. So four turns to build something seems like a lot, but I, I don't know how short. All right, so we just did a lot of stuff that might have pissed off some folks, especially uh, our military person. But we're doing the affordable housing initiative. Is that mining survey, shipyard expansion, mining survey, gas field expansion, mining survey, West Taurus Hospital, mining survey. So there could potentially be a bunch of mines that are going to come up as a result. Right to housing enshrined. Soon the thousands of homeless people living on the streets of Rizia City showing an ugly side of our great kingdom will be history. The Crown is setting out an ambitious program to guarantee housing to everybody. Monique Port Expansion ordered. Hell yeah. Shipyards for everybody. Where's Princess Vina? She's nowhere to begin in the ball season. Okay. So, does this help with the... Hmm. I guess we'll see what happens now. Swordish delegates to visit Port Grezon. If, okay. Interesting. Include Elena in trade talks. Should Treasury Counselor Elena Werner be present in the upcoming Swordish trade talks? Why wouldn't we include her? Gus Manager is requested to speak to the king alone. Gus Manager is a corrupt little... Sycophant. Not sycophant. I don't know. He's a corrupt. I don't trust him. Do any of you trust him? Elena is our economic minister. Gus is going to try and give us some underhanded deal where he'll be like, here's some cash in exchange for selling your country out. Because that's what he does. So we're going to include Elena. With that being said, the next interaction is relatively long, so we're going to go ahead and wrap this episode up here and pick things up next time as we meet the president of Swordland, the third president of Swordland, the character who is in office just before our own uh, character takes over in the main game of Suzerain. But yeah, let's go ahead and wrap this up here. Hope you guys are enjoying the series. Please leave your thoughts down below. And until next time, as always, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.